Howdy y'all, Jackson here with Ictric Studios. If you notice I sound a little angry, uh, that's because I am. This is because the video you just thought you clicked on actually received a community guideline strike. Yes, that is correct. A silly little football video got a guideline strike. Well, the real reason I think uh, that happened is because I had the audacity to decide to mirror my channel and link to BitChute, Portal XYZ, which I re now realize I couldn't even use as a video platform because I don't have an iPhone to upload the video, and Daily Motion. I know, I know, how rebellious. So deserving of a guideline strike. Anyways, just letting you know of this BS. Anyway, uh, now on with your regular scheduled content of the 1993 to 1994 college football playoff, unedited, just without the links in description. Howdy y'all, Jackson here with Ictric Studios, and welcome to another edition of the historic college football playoff. This one, the 1993 to 1994 edition. The battle for the Orange Bowl begins now. The number one 11-0 Nebraska Cornhuskers have fought their way to an undefeated season and now set their sights on the number four 10-1 Notre Dame Fighting Irish, who only just suffered their first loss of the season in a regular season concluding three-point Holy War loss to Boston College. These two powerhouses will meet in the Fiesta Bowl as they both look for a crack at the national championship. We now look east to Dallas and the Cotton Bowl as the number two 11-0 West Virginia Mountaineers, whose season-ending victories over Miami and Boston College helped propel them into the playoff, will take on the number three 11-1 Florida State Seminoles, whose sole loss came as a result of a game of the century game at then number two Notre Dame. Now let the playoffs begin. We will start things off in Tempe, Arizona, at the Fiesta Bowl, as the number one Nebraska Cornhuskers take on the number four Notre Dame Fighting Irish. After a quiet first half, Nebraska quarterback Tommy Frazier would find tight end Matt Shaw for a 15-yard strike to break up the scoreless tie. Nebraska would extend that lead to 10 on their first second half possession with this field goal. The Irish would also find success with their first possession in the second half, as Kevin McDougal would find Derek Mays to cut the Cornhusker lead to 3. The luck of the Irish would continue on its next drive, as McDougal would complete another long touchdown pass to take the lead. And the luck of the Irish wouldn't just stick to the offensive side of the ball, as the Irish defense would force a fumble on the ensuing Cornhusker possession and carry it all the way back for a 62-yard score. The Irish onslaught would continue as they scored 38 unanswered points to upend the Cornhuskers' undefeated seasons on their way to the national championship. We now find ourselves in Dallas, home of the Cotton Bowl, as the number two West Virginia Mountaineers take on the number three Florida State Seminoles. West Virginia would start the scoring in the first with this 46-yard field goal. The Seminole defense would strike back though. After an outstanding Sean List punt, they would stuff this Robert Walker run for a safety. Not to be outdone though, the Mountaineer defense would put up points of its own as Aaron Beasley would get this red zone pick six for the first touchdown of the day. As the first quarter was winding down, Seminole offense would finally find points with this 23-yard field goal. In the second, the Mountaineers would respond with one of their own. With the Seminole offense sitting at the doorstep of points, linebacker Frank Browning would strip sack quarterback Charlie Ward and take it to the house for yet another West Virginia defensive touchdown. The West Virginia onslaught would continue as Jake Kelchner would find Zach Abraham for a 35-yard score and a 27-5 lead. In the closing minutes of the first half, Florida State would start to try to break down that lead with this field goal. In their first drive of the second half, they would add another. Then on their next drive, they would add a touchdown. And they would follow that up with another field goal. Then as the third quarter was coming to a close, they would tack on another to cut down what was once a 22-point West Virginia lead to just three heading into the final quarter of play. But along with the fourth came new life for the Mountaineers as they re-extended their lead to 10. But the Seminoles would strike back with a touchdown of their own, this one a 43-yarder, their longest play of the game. Then with just over four minutes to play, quarterback Charlie Ward would find freshman running back Warwick Dunn for the Seminoles' first lead of the day. And they would hold on to that lead, in fact adding on another score as time expired to win the game 44-34 to and a chance at the national championship. And with that, the Orange Bowl National Championship was set. Number 3 Florida State versus number 4 Notre Dame. A rematch of an earlier season matchup that was home of the first ever live college game day. Florida State would start the scoring in the first with a 31-yard field goal. They would then tack on a 30-yarder late in the first. Then in the opening minutes of the second quarter, they would hit the Irish with some trickeration as a halfback pass goes for an 11-yard score. Two drives later, they would find themselves in the end zone once again as Warwick Dunn breaks a couple tackles on his way to a 19-yard touchdown. After receiving the ball in the second half, the Seminoles would continue to march, capping off the drive with this 29-yard Charlie Ward to Philip Riley bomb. 
With that, the Seminoles would continue to cruise. They win the national championship over number 4 Notre Dame, 57 to 8. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please consider leaving a like, dropping a comment, or if you have not, subscribe. If your team lost, you hate my voice, or you have any other reason to, I won't hold that dislike against you. But please leave some creative criticism in the comments so perhaps one day I could win you over. Additionally, I have a whole bunch of football content, including historic college football playoffs for all the following years, as well as an 18 playoffs for uh, 2014 onwards, some history videos and other simulation content, most notably a continuation of the Chicago College All-Star Game. I also have some film reviews and political videos if those are of interest to you. If any of those sound interesting, please consider looking them up and subscribing. Also, just for future reference, I will be backing up some of my videos on a host of other video platforms. I'll link there in the description if you want to follow me there. Anyway, thank you again for watching. Bye.